All right, in this video, we're going to finish our discussion with geometry. Um, we're going to be primarily talking about three main concepts. One, surface area. Two, volume. And then lastly, we'll spend a little bit more time on, because I want it's, it's really tedious, is finding the area of irregular shaped objects. Now, let's just go ahead and start with the easy stuff first. Uh, we're working basically with solid uh, geometrics uh, items now. Uh, basically think of it like this, pyramids, cubes, cones, stuff like that. Uh, nothing all that hard. And what we're going to do is calculate two things. First, we're going to calculate volume. Second, we're going to calculate surface area. Uh, the definition of a volume is this, space occupied by a solid geometric figure. In other words, I Though I don't look like a solid geometric figure, uh, I am one, and I take up a lot of space. Frankly, I probably take up physically more space than most people, all right? That's really all it is, is how much volume, how much space I'm taking up. Uh, this notepad, it takes up space, but it doesn't take up nearly as much space as I do. All right, so that's really all it is, is how much space it is. And it's very similar to area, except area is how much 2D space you take up, and volume is how much 3D space you take up. All right, the next thing that we'll talk about is surface area. It's the sum of all the areas of all the faces of a solid geometric unit. All right, huh? All right, it's easier than it sounds. All right, I have a three-dimensional shape right here. This is my handy dandy notebook. This notebook has six individual sides. I have a front, a back, a top, a bottom, a left, and a right. Okay? Now, I can calculate the area, this area of each individual side. In doing so, I can add up all those sides together and I would find the surface area. If that's confusing, I like to look at it like this. How much wrapping paper will it take for me to cover this notebook? Or how much wrapping paper would it take for me to cover, I don't know, say, the pyramids in Egypt? Okay, That's really all surface area is, is how much paper or how much area you're taking up. It's the difference between area and volume. Surface area is looking at the 2D space, where volume is looking at the 3D space. All right. I am not going to list all the equations on the side that are dealing with surface area and volume. I'm not going to do that. I believe at this point in time in life you should know what a uh, rectangular square is or a cube is or anything like that. You should be able to figure it out. And if you don't, you've got a nice handy dandy list in your notebooks with all the equations that you need to know. So if you get a problem, you can just look, hey, look, oh, that's that shape, so I'm going to use this equation. So I think that I can trust y'all in that. So let's just go ahead and jump right on into our very first problem that I do want to just kind of walk you through. And it's this one. We have a cube, and each side is worth E. But what we're trying to do is find out how much the area is excuse me, volume, but this is what we know. E is worth, say, 7.42 centimeters. So our job is to calculate volume. Well, if you look into your equations, you should find out that volume is equal to length times width times height. Well, what's my length? What's my width and what's my height? Since this is a cube, all sides are the same. So my length is 7.42, my height is 7.42, and my width. So I'm just going to simply say 7.42, and I'm going to multiply itself by three times. However, I don't want to type it all out, so I'm going to say 7.42 to the third power. Why? Because of this. Going back and ruining your, your day by talking about exponents. If I'm multiplying the same number three times, I can just say 7.42 to the third power, which is what I'm going to do with my calculator. What I get is that my volume is 408.518848 and a bunch more numbers. Okay. However, what I want to do is round to the nearest whole. And so my nearest whole number is, here's my 8. That 5 tells that 8 to get on up. Therefore, my volume is equal to 409. What's my units? Well, I was in centimeters. Okay. Now, we have to figure out 
this is not correct yet. Why? I told you that distance will always be to the first power or just like centimeters, just meters. I also told you that area will always be square. Well, volume will always be cubed. So my correct answer is 409 centimeters cubed. All right, in this problem, I've given you the picture of the cone. I've given you its dimensions. I know the height of my cone is 5.9 meters. So my height is 5.9. I know the radius of my cone is 2.4 meters. And I also know the length of the side of my cone. So from the tip of my cone down to the bottom, this side is 6.4 meters. Your job is to find the volume and area. So how do we do that? Well, look at your formula sheets and you find the volume of a cone. And you find out that you have this equation. V is equal to one-third pi r squared times height. All right, so now that we know this, we basically can plug in our numbers. Do we know the radius? Yes, our radius is 2.4. So we're going to say 2.4. Do I know my height? Yes, it's 5.9. So now I've got everything ready. I'm going to say 1 third times pi times 2.14 squared times 5.9. Now when you go to put this in your calculator for this problem, I'm going to say that pi is equal to 3.14. Okay, so use pi equals 3.14 and let's solve for it. So I'm going to do it with you. We say one third times 3.14 times 2.4 squared times 5.9. When I do, I get that my volume is equal to 35.56992. However, I want to round, in this case, let's round to the nearest uh, let's do it, do it accurately. If we were doing this by accuracy, we would be multiplying, so we need to round this to two significant digits. Why? Because each one of these have two significant digits. So if we round by two sig figs, we go, there's my first one, that's my second one. This five tells that five to get up there, and we find out that our volume is equal to 36, and nothing else, all these become zeros and dropped, meters, and since this is volume, it's meters cubed. So our volume is 36 meters cubed. All right, so the next thing I ask you to find is the surface area. So I'm going to pause for just a second, let you write this down, and then we're going to come back. All right, so the next thing that we need to do is find the surface area. To do that, we find this equation, pi r squared plus pi times r times s. Do we have everything we need? Do we have r, which is radius? Yes, we do. Do we have the side, which is s? Yes, we do. So we can say pi times 2.4 squared plus pi times 2.4 times 6.4. Alright, we're going to work this all out in the calculator. Okay, so I know 3.14 times 2.4 squared plus pi, which is 3.14, times 2.4 times 6.4. And when I do, I get 326.76096. All right. However, I want to, in this case, I don't feel like doing significant digits. I'm going to say let's round to the nearest hundredth just because I want to round to the nearest hundredth. Well, my hundredths place is right here. That zero tells that six to stay the same. So we get 326.76. All right, now notice what I did. The first time I told you to round to the correct accuracy, the second time around I told you to round to a certain part. You need to understand this. I can tell you whatever I want to tell you. Your job is to be able to get 
the correct answer here, and then finally, you just listen to the instructions that I give you. Do you round to the nearest hole? Do you round to the nearest thousands? Hundreds. So you need to be very careful of that. Not every question is going to tell you round the same way. So be cautious. That's why I wanted you to see it. We rounded to two sig figs the first time. This time, we rounded to the nearest hundredth. And our unit, by the way, was meters square. All right? So let's move on to the next problem. What we're going to go ahead and do is skip the easy peasy lemon squeezy questions now. I feel like you could pretty much, if I give you a shape and I tell you to find volume and find surface area, all you got to do is really look at the equations and you'll be all right. I am more concerned with taking these information and applying it to more of a real world problem. So, such as this horrible looking word problem that's before you. So let's read it. It says, a special wedge in the shape of a rectangular pyramid has a square base 14.0 millimeters on a side. The height of the wedge is 70.0 millimeters. What is the total surface area of the wedge? Now, I am going to be completely honest with you. This is going to be a tough problem. All right. Again, as per with my word problems, pause the video, take a look at it. I want you to try to see if you can figure out anything you can do on your own before you watch me do this in the classroom. So again, pause the video, try it on your own, and then let's see how you did. All right. So... Here's the truth. This is a tough problem. I said that a while ago and I'm saying it again. The reason why this problem is so tough is it requires you to take everything that you learned at the beginning of this module back in the very first video that you saw from module two and start to applying it into this. So there's a lot of little concepts that you've got to understand. So let's look at the problem and we'll read it one more time and then we'll, we'll kind of put stuff in our picture that might help us out. It says a special wedge in the shape of a regular pyramid. Okay, so I have a regular pyramid. Has a square base. So our base down here is square. All right, cool. And it tells me that it's 14.0 milliliters. So I'm going to, excuse me, millimeters. I'm going to put 14.0 millimeters. So this side is 14. That also means that this side is 14. And since it's square, it's all the way around. All right, next, it tells me that I have a height of 70 millimeters. So from the base all the way to my point, I'm going to say that my height is 70.0 millimeters. Now, the problem is asking me for the surface area, okay? So how do I find the surface area of this type of shape? Well, this is my equation. Area is equal to the base plus one half the perimeter times the side. All right, so we've got to figure out some things. Can we calculate the base right now? All right, well, yes, the area of the base we can calculate because here's 14, here's 14, so we can calculate the area of the base. Can we calculate the area, uh, excuse me, can we calculate the perimeter? Yes, we can. We know that the perimeter is going around the base, and since each side is 14, we can calculate the perimeter. Can we find S? Well, here's the problem. Currently, we don't know what S is. All right, so what we're going to have to do before we can start plugging in any numbers, we got to solve for S. So let's keep this in mind and I'm going to erase it. What is S? Well, let's look at our shape. We have a pyramid. We know that our height is perpendicular to our base. That means that from here to here, we have a distance. So from the middle of our base to the outer edge, how would we figure out the distance between the middle to the outer edge? 
Well, that's kind of simple. Think about this logically for just a second. If you know from one end to the other end of your base is 14, and your height is somewhere in the middle, you're really only finding from the outer edge to the middle, right? Let's say that one more time. My goal is to go from the outer edge to the middle. Well, the middle of 14 is what? 7. So I know that this is going to be 7. So this is what we just kind of found out. We know our height. We know that this piece is 7, but we're still about to figure out S. How does this help us? Pythagorean theorem. Oh, Lord, no. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. All right. So what have we found out? We just found out this. We know our height to be 70. We know the middle point from the outside edge to where the height is a 7. Well, they meet at a, they are perpendicular. They meet at a 90 degrees. What did I tell you? When sides meet at a 90 degree angle, what are they? They are your legs. So A can be 70 square plus 14, excuse me, plus 7 square equals C square. Well, what's C? Well, C is this missing piece that we're trying to find, S. So we've just kind of created this equation. So I don't feel like working all this the way out, so I'm just going to say square root all this. So I just found out that S is equal to the square root of 70 squared plus 7 squared. That's what S is. Well now, going back to the original equation to find surface area, I know how to find my base. I know how to find my perimeter. I now know what S is. I can plug everything back into the original equation. So let's do that. So I said that surface area is equal to my base plus one half the perimeter times S. So let's plug in what we know. Base, how do we find it? Well, it's going to be 14 squared. Because 14 times 14. Plus 1 half. Well, what's my perimeter? Well, each side is worth 14, so I can say 14 times 4. So P becomes 14 times 4. Do I know S? Yes, I do. My S is the square root of 70 squared plus 7 squared. So I can move that. Now I've got this long-winded equation that I can work out. And this makes my life so much easier. I've just found everything I need to know. So going back, before I even start crunching numbers with you, going back over it, what did we have to find? We had to find the area of our base, which is 14 times 14. We had to find the perimeter, which we know to be 14 times plus 14 plus 14 plus 14, or simply put, 14 times 4. We had to find the side length. And in order for us to do that, we had to use Pythagorean theorem and solve for s. And so that's what we've done. Now that we've done that, we can work everything all the way out. We can say 14 squared is equal to 196 plus, well, this is going to be 14 times 4, and that's going to give me 1 half times 56 times, and we're going to say the square root of 70 squared plus 7 squared. I get 49, 49. So that's 196 plus 1 half times 56 times the square root of 49, 49. Now, this is as probably as far as I'm going to take it out in papers this next step. is 196 plus 28 times the square root of 49, 49. At this point in time, we just want to plug everything into our calculator and see what we get. So 14 
excuse me, 196 plus 28 times the square root of 4,949. We get 2165.7756. Now in your problem, I told you to round to the nearest 10 spot, to the nearest 10 spot. Well, your nearest 10 spot is right here. So that five tells that six to do what? To go on up there. So I get 217. Now, what happens to this? This five becomes a zero. These decimals become a zero. And we drop the decimals. So ultimately, our answer becomes 2,170 millimeters. What's my unit? Square. Now, because this problem is so long and so tough, I suggest that you re-watch what we just did a couple of times until you've got this master. This is a really good question that I may decide to put on a test because it takes all your skills to solve it. This question reads, a propane gas tank has the shape of a right circular cylinder with a hemisphere on each end. If the cylinder part of the tank is 8 foot long and the diameter is 9 foot long as shown below, find the volume of the tank. Use 3.14 for pi and round final answer to two decimal places. Okay, just like always, pause the video, try this on your own, and then when you're ready, unpause it. Alright, this problem is not as bad as you may have thought it to be if you looked at it from a couple uh, perspectives. First off, this problem states that this tank has a hemisphere on both sides of the tank. Well, what's a hemisphere? Well, a hemisphere is simply a half of a sphere. So if I got a half a sphere here and a half a sphere there, together what do I have? I have an entire sphere. Not only do I have an entire sphere, but the problem also says that the middle part of the tank is a cylinder. So what did I need to do now? Well, it's asking me to find the volume of the entire shape. So if I know that this, this hemisphere and this hemisphere make a sphere, I can find the volume of a sphere, and then I can find the volume of that cylinder, and I can add. So this problem has just been made really, really simple for us by just saying, hey, find the volume of a sphere and add it to the volume of a cylinder. So let's do that. Volume of a sphere is equal to uh, 4 thirds pi r cubed. Okay, so let's plug in our numbers. 4 thirds times pi times, well, what's my radius in this particular part? Well, we need to look at it. We know that from top to bottom, our height of our tank is 9 feet. However, that 9 feet also represents the diameter of our tank. So we can say that our radius is 4.5. So we can say 4 thirds times 3.14 times 4.5 cubed, and we get that the volume of the sphere is 381.51. So this is the volume of our sphere. Now, let's find the volume of our cylinder. Well, to do that, it's pi r squared times height. So that's going to be pi. Well, our radius has not changed. So it's going to be 4.5 squared. Well, what's my height? Well, this middle section is my cylinder, okay? We have to remember that sometimes shapes may be standing upright or laying down. In this case, it's laying down. So my height is really 8 foot. So I'm going to say 3.14 times 4.5 squared times 8, and I get 508.68. Now, 
I said at the beginning that in order for me to find the entire shape, I had to add the volume of the sphere and the volume of the cylinder. So I'm going to say 508.68 plus 381.51 and I get that my entire shape is going to be 890.19. Now the problem told us to round to two decimal places and this is in two decimal places so we're done except for the unit. Well what did I start with? I started with feet and because my final answer is volume, and volume must always be cubed. So my answer is 890.19 cubic feet. We are almost done. We have two more rules that we're going to be going over. So before we begin that, I'm going to make a suggestion. If you have been watching this video from start all the way up until this point, you are probably burnt out. So I'm going to make a suggestion. Pause the video. Go watch some Netflix. Go Hulu or something. I don't care. Take a break. All right? You're probably burnt out from those last two problems I did with you. I'm not going to lie to you because they burnt me out. They just, they just do. So take a break. I'll wait. And when you're ready, we'll finish up this video. All right. I'll just stand right here and twiddle my thumbs and just wait until you're done. I have no idea else what I'm going to do. I guess I could pick my nose, but that would probably be rude. Um, are you back yet? No? Okay. Kind of bored. Oh, you're back. Cool. All right. Yes, I'm talking to the voices in my head. Leave me alone. All right. Now, sometimes we get some really weird shapes, and we can't follow normal rules, that, such as, okay, this is a rectangle. Find the area. We get this weird, funky-looking thing. It looks like, I don't know, a blob, okay? And our job is to find the area. Um, for both of these types of rules that we're going to be going on, first is called uh, trapezoidal, and the second will be Simpson. Both of them require us to draw parallel lines going up and down the weird shape. Alright, so notice that I've got parallel lines. Also notice this. Each parallel line is two centimeters apart from one another. So this one's my first one, two centimeters later I got the next one, etc, etc, etc. Alright, so with that being said, not only do I know how far apart these parallel lines are, I know how long each parallel line is, such as this one is 2.56, this is 3.82, etc, etc, etc. Now, this is one of those really, really long equations, so I'm going to actually have to probably get on my knees here and write down the bottom of the board because I really want you to see what's happening in this problem. Alright, now, so, the area, uh, we've already, we should have the equation, I'm going to put it up high so we can leave it up here, uh, somewhere over the corner somewhere, so you should have your equation visible. And matter of fact, let's bring this down so you can make sure we, we make sure that you have the equation somewhere where you can see it. Uh, a is h over 2, right? Well, what's h? Well, h represents how far each one of the parallel lines are apart. Well, in this case, my parallel lines are 2 centimeters apart. So h is just going to be 2. Now the next piece says y subscript 0 and plus 2y subscript 1, etc, etc. Well, that's really to say, okay, here's my first line, my second line, my third line, etc. So y subscript 0, y0 is, we're going to say it's this guy. It's the very first line I'm going to come to. Alright, so y subscript 0 is just going to be 2.56. Now, it says plus 2y subscript 1. Well, that means that I'm going to have to add what twice whatever my second parallel line is. My second parallel line is 3.82. So my equation is going to say 
2 times 3.82. And I'm going to continue doing this until I get to the very last line. So all of these, the 3.25, the 2.95, and the 1.85, each one of those are going to be multiplied by 2. However, my last line will not be. So when you're working with sim, sim, not Simpsons rule, excuse me, trapezoidal rule, the first line and the last line, you just write whatever their value is. However, all the individual parallel lines in between, you always have to multiply by 2 as you're adding this thing up. So let's go ahead and finish this out. We know this is going to be 2.56 plus 2 point times 3.2, excuse me, 2 times 3.82 plus 2 times 3.25 plus 2 times 2.95, and I'm probably going to be running out of room here, plus 2 times 1.85 plus 0 0.00. All right, now, whoo, that's a lot. However, again, a lot to do. It's just tedious. It's not hard. It's just tedious. And now, what we're going to do is work everything out. We know that 2 divided by 2 is just going to be 1. We're going to say 2.56 plus, and now we're going to do our multiplication. This is going to give us 7.64 plus 6.5 plus 5.9 plus 3.7 plus 0. I believe you understand how I got these numbers. In case you don't, 2 times 3.8 is 7.64. 2 times 3.25 is 6.5, etc., etc., etc. All right, now that I've done all this, I can just finish out my problem. And I find out that my area is going to end up being 26.3. Okay, so I add all these numbers inside my parentheses and multiply it by that one, I get 26.3. But what's my unit? Well, what did I start with? I started with centimeters. Well, this is area, so it's not going to be just centimeters, it's going to be centimeters squared. Now, trapezoidal rule is time consuming. However, it's going to be all right. You have about two two or three questions concerning trapezoidal rule and Simpson's rule on your homework. So please practice that. You will probably get one, uh, maybe one or two of those types of questions on your next test. All right. So the next way that we can uh, find the area of some weird shapes is through Simpson's rule, which you should be seeing across your screen. Again, this is very similar to um, what the trapezoidal rule was, except if you notice we've got, instead of saying uh, y sub zero plus two times whatever plus two times whatever all the way, and it's got a two, there's a four, so you've got different numbers. Um, so the pattern's a little bit different. The other thing you need to know is this, a trapezoidal rule, it doesn't matter how many lines or parallel lines you make. Whereas Simpson rules, it does. You need to have a starter line, which is Y0. So like this one right here would be Y0 for us is 407. And all the lines after Y0, you'd have to have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. What it basically means is this. Um, you have to have an even number of parallel lines after your y0 for this equation to work. So if you were to use this and you had a total of, instead of here's my y0 and instead of 6 there was 7, your equation would not work. You always have to have an even number of parallel lines and that's not including uh, your y0. So just like with the trapezoidal rule, we basically are going to plug in numbers, okay? So, uh, where it says this time, in the, it says h over 3. So, what's h for this particular problem? Well, I set this up that the, they are 100 feet 
apart. So every parallel line is 100 foot apart. So my equation is going to go like this. A is equal to 100 divided by 3. Now, the next part tells us y0. Well, I told you that right now. y0 is going to be 407. Okay? And now we're going to finish it out. We're going to go through each one. So this would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, all the way down until we get to the very last one. So it's going to be plus 4 times 483 because our equation says that it's going to be y0 plus 4y1, which is going to be this one. The next says plus 2y2. So what I'm right now is going to be plus 2 times 382. And we're going to continue this pattern all the way out. So I would do next would be plus 4 times 378 plus 2 times 285 plus 4 times 384. And then my last number, I'm just going to add it, 495. All right? So that equation that we have, we basically just substitute everything in. We're going to work it all the way out. We know this is going to stay 100 over 3. I'm not going to change anything with it. And I'm going to get 407 plus 1932, because 4 times 483 is 1982, plus, excuse me, 32, not 82, plus 70, uh, 764 plus 1512 plus 570 plus 1536 plus 495. Okay? Again, just follow what the, the equation says. Just multiply. 4 times 483 is 1932. 2 times 3082 is 764. 4 times 378 is 1512. 2 times 285 is 570. 4 times 384 is 1536. And then just add the last 495. Let's continue this out. We get 100 over 3 times 700, uh, excuse me, 7,216. If we work this all the way out now, we've got it where we can do it nice and easy now. We get this number, 24053.3 infinity. All right, so I want to round this. This is, we're going to round this to something a little bit more manageable. Let's round it to the nearest thousandths position. Not thousandths, but thousand. All right, so when we round the 1,000, which is going to be at this point, that 5 tells that 0 to get on up there. So we can round this to 241,000. Now, what's my units? Well, I started in feet, and since this is area, it's going to be square. So my final answer is 241,000 feet square. Now, I'm going to just kind of roll back and forth as a disembodied head down the bottom of your screen because I think that's cool looking. Um, we're done. We're done with this module. Uh, remember, these videos are just to teach you the basics. I don't want you thinking that these videos are going to be the solve-all situation. They're not. Okay? So watch these videos. Go back through your homework. See where it helps you. But ultimately, you still have me. You still physically see me in class. Okay? So please, don't hesitate to ask. I feel like I'm a broken record because I ask this every time. But I want you to know that the disembodied head that floats across your screen right now is willing to help you if you only ask. So, we're done. Module 2 is over with. Uh, good luck on your test, and I will see you next module. Bye-bye.